Um, all right, so here I am in the AWS console. Um, as mentioned in the flyer uh, for today's session, week 12, right? Um, so today what we want to do is good thing, you know, you guys now, I mean, you guys are, what should I say? AWS gurus at this point, right? Of course, we're getting there, okay? Right? And what I always try to tell students is where, wherever you are in life, right? Uh, um, especially as we talk about our professions, you know, never be complacent, right? Never say I'm at that place where I'm very knowledgeable, right? You always have to ask yourself every day, right? Uh, 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 and uh, as I always say, I don't know if I've said that on these sessions before, at least give yourself, no matter how busy you are in a day, 30 minutes, right? Add something, continue to increase your knowledge, buy books, <laughs> right? In your area of study, cybersecurity, cloud computing, learn, see what other people's, people are writing about these uh, topics, right? It doesn't have to be related to a certification. I don't know if you guys have seen some of my LinkedIn posts. I buy security engineering books, right? Random, just to read. So every day I ask myself, where's my 30 minutes, right? No matter how busy I get. So always think about that. Always thinking about your 30 minutes in a day. Say to yourself, no matter how busy I am, that 30 minutes I'm going to use to make sure that I increase my knowledge. So um, uh, uh, these sessions, you know, uh, it's part of coming, you know, every weekend, you know, to learn something together in cloud computing. You know, as I'm learning myself, I'm coming to teach it back to you guys. Um, uh, and then we are all getting better together. Now, with that said, we've done a lot so far, right? As we as we continue to push ourselves to continue to learn about cloud and how it works, so we can you know go out there and look for jobs and help companies and get paid, right? <laughs> get paid good money. So um, we've been able to launch instances, you know, uh, put it behind a load balancer, you know, put it in our browser. It works, right? We help. We just helped our company. Uh, 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 put their application up online for the whole world to be able to access, right? But we've been doing that in a way that, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, what will I say, 100% secure, right? Uh, we've been using HTTP. So today what we want to do, guys, is what? Our company says, hey, no more HTTP, right? right? And we're going into real production now, right? We're going into a real production environment now. So what we want you to do as a solutions architect is uh, help us uh, get this done, right? As a cloud engineer, as a solutions architect, as the cloud architect, right? Get this done. Tell our, uh, you know, tell the junior staff how to do it, right? Do a whiteboarding session for them, right? And show them what to do. So uh, um, in today's session, what we want to do is, you know, take that website, like let's say it's already running, HTTP, right? We can go to it. We know how to, you know, customize our URL now. But now we go to our uh, custom domain name, Right, we don't use that long ELB URL or that long EC2 URL. We use our own custom now because we know how to do that uh, uh, since last week. Now, right, we know how to do that by just you know going to what's the name of the service. What's it, before I continue talking, what's the name of the service? What did we use last class to get that done? Quickly in the chat, fastest finger first. There you go, raw fifty three, right. Now, um, in addition to that, from a uh, uh, very good job, guys. Um, now, what we want to do is now make it HTTPS, right? So that that's exactly that's exactly what we're going to do now. So that way, even if the application that we're hosting on our uh, 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 on our uh, uh, servers uh, needs to like do some type of transaction, right? Send credit card numbers, send you know confidential num information back and forth, is doing it over a secure a, a connection right which is what which is what h which is what guys instead of http it's going to be over https exactly now the service that we're going to use for that today guys is i know many of you know this this is this is path revision for some of you right that are already certified what is it what's the service we're going to use to get that achieved today quickly in the chat is everyone watching the chat take a look at the chat let's see what the answer is what service are we going to use? There you go. Ismail got it. Amani, yes, is is SSL. Yep. We'll get a certificate. It's going to be SSL. AWS Certificate Manager. Amino also got it. Very good. Certificate Manager. All right. 
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, first let's do what we already know how to do best. Let's launch that server. In fact, let's launch two servers, right? And then put it behind the load balancer. And then uh, um, we can launch one, but let's, uh, it doesn't hurt to launch two. Let's go ahead and launch two. So let's go ahead and go to EC2 console. Okay, this lab today shouldn't be, you know, uh, uh, too long. Should be very quick. Um, instances running. Okay, I have no instances running. So I'm going to go ahead and launch instance. Let me get my script ready. My EC2 bash script. Where is it? Yep, there it is. Let me just minimize and get it ready. All right. Um, I'm just going to refresh that. Okay, Amazon Linux is what I'm going to choose. I'm going to select that. What else? What else? What else? Uh, configure instance details, T2 micro, right? Let's say I want two. Okay. I don't have to use two, guys. You guys can use one. Okay, let's say I want two. I want. Actually, let's use one. Okay, because it's not going to let me choose. I want to put one in 1A and one in 1B. But I don't think I'll be able to do that like this. If, let's see, I have I haven't really done it this way before. Yeah, it's only it's just gonna put both into a. It's okay. Let's use one. Uh, one a. And then what else? Uh, subnet setting, IAM role, S3 and SSM. Is everyone following? Give me a three if you're following so far. My recorder is still working. Yep. Okay. Very good. All right. What else? What else? What else? Uh, terminate. Shut down behavior. Terminate. This is all common to you guys. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What else? What else? File systems. And then let's paste our code. Let us paste our code. Okay. You said MK, MK. MK. Yep. All right. Paste your code. I know you guys already have this handy somewhere as well. We've done this over and over again. Um, if you're new uh, to these sessions, don't worry. Um, I always put in the description the link to the um, to the playlist. Also, please make sure you join the Telegram channel and you see the uh, pinned post at the top of the page. You can just click on that pinned post and you see a lot of, uh, of valuable information about these sessions and you know what what i do with the telegram channel and my articles and all that okay so don't worry still follow still watch along um if you're already certified and this is just review or just for you to get more hands-on that's good as well then all some of this should not be very foreign to you or strange or weird right uh you probably you know know what what all of this is all about if you're new you know you have some other cloud computing background or some it background don't worry you want to learn AWS and learn hands-on, just start from week one and catch up with us, okay? But still stick uh, uh, stick with us and uh, watch what we're doing. All right, add storage. Uh, 8 gig is fine. Add tags. Let's give it a name. Let's say name is web server. Okay, web server. Uh, configure security group. What security group should we give these guys? Give me one second. I forgot to turn. Let me turn on my VPN. Okay. Um, I don't even, I don't need SSA to be honest. Uh, select an existing group guys. I'm going to use my web server security group. Uh, please give me in the chat. I'm hope. Remember I said, do not delete your security groups. Right, we've configured it in a way that you know, as long if we're using a load balancer, it's going to be secure. And today, yes, guys, we're going to use a load balancer. Okay, so just to make sure before I move on, do you still have your uh, web server security group, your load balancer security group, and your database security group? Although we're not going to use database security group today because the uh, application we're using doesn't have a database behind it, but we're just going to assume that it's a dynamic website that talks with database and all that. But do you guys still have, apart from Aminu, anyone else, Sylvia? Heba, uh, uh, everyone else, do you have your web server, load balancer, and database security group still there? If you choose select existing, do you still see yours? 
If I get two more, I'm good. Okay, Ronnie says yes. Oluwabumi says yes. Okay, very good. All right, let's move on. Web Server Security Group, guys. Um, go ahead and click on Review and Launch. Okay, we're going to use our Web Server Security Group for this. Um, le wait, let me... I'm going to close this. Let me go back. Uh, let me go back. I wanted to change something real quick. Uh, storage, 8 gig, add tags, 8 gig, configure security group. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing's changing, guys. Uh, just making sure of something. You will not be able to connect to this instance. Now, before I move on, guys, again, this is all about learning and making sure that you guys are aware of, you know, what we're doing here. And, and then sometimes I talk about this warning uh, uh, sign. Now, here's my question. Why is it okay for me to ignore this? Who can tell me in the chat? I know you guys know this. Why is it okay for me to ignore this? Ah, I, I didn't quickly take a look at my chat, but I think Faisal answered after I asked the question, right? So Faisal, yes, SSM, because I, <laughs> very good, right? Because I already gave it a role. So I, I have, I can use, what is that service called? If I need to SSH into, into these instances, guys, I think that was week four, week five. What am I going to use? Session manager. Wow, this person is on very good. I know you all know it. I know you. All right, I'm going to continue. Okay. All right. Uh, launch instance. So I'm going to go ahead and launch now. Okay. I'm, I'm not missing anything, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and launch, guys. Use my uh, key pair that I have. Use your own key pair. Launch instances. Launch instance. Okay, so it's launching. There it is. All right, so in the meantime, let's go and create our load balancer, guys. Okay, so click on load balancers at the bottom left. Load balancer. Okay, I do not have any. Go ahead and create load balancer. Application load balancer. Application load balancer. It's going to be internet facing. Yep. HTTP. Okay. Um, again, just select all of this. This is assuming we're going to need it in all of our AZs. So just select everything. Although we're just using 1A, but yeah. Just go ahead uh, and select everything. Um, and then go ahead and click on Configure Security Settings. Okay, I forgot to give it a name. So let me call it Test ELB. Okay, Test ELB. All right. Uh, of course, our default VPC, again, check all of the availability zones configure security settings okay it's not using any secure listener yep we know that uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on this later all right configure security groups guys configure security groups all right i'm gonna click on that okay what security group are we using guys in the chat what security group are we using aminu great job all right, so I'm going to uncheck that and check my load balancer security group. Okay, now guys, again, in the chat, our load balancer security group, where is it allowing connection from? Let me make sure you guys know what you're doing as you're choosing all of this. Where is it? Where is our load balancer security group uh, accepting connections from? Okay, we're not using auto scaling group here, uh, 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 Faisal. We can, but we're not. You remember, we're not using. We're not like auto scaling our instance. We're just gonna attach our our instance directly to the load balancer today. We're not. So Aminu, very good. From the world, from the world, the rules in the load balancer security group is allow HTTP uh, 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 from the world, which is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0, and then allow also 443. So make sure your load balancer security. We're gonna go check after I finish this, but just make sure. Uh, 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 that's what it does. That's what it's allowing. It's allowing 0, .0, 0, 0 from the world to to HTTP and HTTPS. Our web server security group, guys. Aminu, I don't want you to answer this. Uh, Aminu and Ronnie, don't answer this, okay? <laughs> um, where is our web server security group allowing connection from? Where is our web server security group allowing connection from? Very good, Oluwabumi. Very good, Amani. Very good, very very good. Our load, our web server security group is only allowing connection from what? From the load balancer. Very good job, guys. All right, moving on. So next, configure routing. Okay, target group. 
uh, let's call this test TG. Remember, this target group is what's gonna hold. It, it, it's what's gonna have our uh, our servers. Um, all right. Um, instance. It's gonna be an instance. Okay. Leave everything else as default path. That. Yep. Test our home page for the health check. Uh, I like I said. I would just like to change this to two. I think five is just ridiculous. Too much for me. I mean, it depends on. But I just leave it at two. Okay. You can do three, four. Um, I mean five and all that. I think it's getting a little too much. All right. Um. All right, guys. Let's register our target to this target group. Okay, so I'm gonna click on register targets. Okay, now I have one instance running. I could have had two, but that's fine. Let's just use one. Okay, uh, our load balancer can allow using just one. But again, the purpose of a load balancer usually is you have two or three or ten, and you want to load balance between all of them. But it's fine. Let's assume two here or three or ten. It's fine. Okay, so if you had ten servers here. You can just check all and add to registered, okay? Or if you're using a, uh, uh, an auto scaling group, then you're not gonna add to registered here. You're, go you're just gonna connect your auto scaling group to your load balancer. And we did that in week seven, six, five. <laughs> I, had I can't remember. But you guys get the point, right? So here we don't have an auto scaling group. We're just gonna go ahead and attach this instance directly to the load balancer, okay? So we have one instance running, which is this one. So we're gonna click on add to registered now. Again, if we had two, three, we're gonna check all and, and click on add to register. Okay, so go ahead and click on make sure it's checked. Make sure it's checked. Add to registered. Okay, there it is. We've attached it now to the load uh, load balancer. Go ahead and click on review. You don't see your instance. Uh, oh, Sylvia, I don't know what happened there. Uh, maybe you're in the wrong region. Maybe you created the instance in the wrong region and for your load balancer, you uh, maybe your region is wrong or something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, review. I'm gonna go ahead and click on review. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to click on create. Okay. All right. It says it successfully created the load balancer. Let me click on the load balancer. Okay. I'm in the load balancer page. Now it is provisioning. Let me go check my instance. Let me go check my instance. Is my instance created instances. Okay. This was a test from earlier. Uh, let me filter by, you don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just filtering by instance state running so i only see my running server okay not the ones that have been terminated all right all right all right um what else we have our load balancer now let's go and get that certificate guys that certificate that, that's gonna allow our, our web browsers to connect to our you know uh, 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 application backend via https okay so browsers from now on again again the goal of today is so that you know people don't use an insecure connection right so we need a certificate to you to do a secure connection all right so let me go to acm now uh i'm just going to open a new tab right click here open a new tab here's the new tab okay just type acm all right or you can type certificate manager whichever one it'll show you this one okay i'm going to click on this certificate manager okay I'm gonna click on provision certificates. Okay, uh, if you need private certificates as well, we're not gonna to touch this, but um, this is a public website and all that uh, internet facing. We're gonna get this, okay? Go ahead and click on get started. And also private certificates are expensive. All right, so unless you know what you're doing and your, and your application really needs this, it's internal and all that, then you get a private certificate. So go ahead and click on get started. All right, so we're gonna say request a public certificate, okay? So I'm gonna click on request a certificate, okay? Now, what domain do I want? Now, guys, for my website, okay, um, I'm gonna use what we call a wildcard here, okay? So here's what I'm saying. If I do www.yescertifiedaws.com or if I do test.yescertifiedaws.com or if I do xyz.yescertifiedaws.com, then this certificate you know would also support that all right so what i want you to do now is put star dot then your domain that you bought don't put mine okay your domain that you bought guys okay so star would allow anything from before here okay it could be www www it could be xyz it could be whatever you want to put there you can also use that 
uh, as long as you configure it to have a resource behind it. So just put a star here so it supports like anything you put before this. All right. And also I want you to add another one. Okay. And this time you're going to put this. So, so if people type this in the browser as well, it will also be supported just like that with this certificate. Okay. It's certified AWS.com. Okay. Uh, type the number three if you're following me so far. Type the number three if you're following me so far. Aminu, Faisal, Astu, very good, very good. All right, uh, what else, what else? So let's go ahead and click on next. Okay, go ahead and click on next. DNS validation. Now guys, I know Ronnie was asking last week about what are the benefits of you know getting the domain from Route 53. You guys are going to see what I'm talking about in this case, for example, right? For some of you that ha that may have your you know, domain with a third party, you would have to log into that third party and enter some C name and, uh, and value, right? That AWS is going to give you to, AWS is going to tell you, take this and put it in your domain. Okay. So we know that you can actually do that, right? Now, in our case, we're using AWS is route 53 here. Instead of copying those values and going and put it in GoDaddy or uh, in HostGator or wh whichever uh, DNS provider you're using, domain name, uh, where you have your uh, domain registered. Um, in our case, we have again we have it raw 53. So what, what we're gonna do now is um, it's just gonna give us a button, right? Hey, you have a, 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 your domain registered with us, right? Just click this button and, and we'll enter it into it uh, to uh, to confirm that you own it, okay, and to validate it. So we're going to use DNS validation in this case. Okay. So this is going to be easier for us to bought our domain from AWS from route 53. Okay. So I'm going to click on next now. Okay. I'm not going to add tags. I can say name, uh, web server. I don't have to do this, but, um, now I'm going to click on review. Okay. So yes, these domains for that certificate and all that. Okay. Confirm request. All right. So there it is guys It's pending validation. Tap the number five. If you're following me so far, because this is like the key of today's uh, uh, work. <laughs> okay. Tap the number five. If you're following me so far. Carrie, Faisal, Lucky. Very good. Very good. Good to see that. Um, now guys, what I'm going to do now is I need to validate, right? It, those values I'm telling you about, if I, let me click. I need to click on this arrow right now. Okay. Now these are the values you need to enter into your domain. Okay. GoDaddy or whatever, but you can see for me now, I can just click what create record in Rafi to three, which I'm just, I'm going to do. I'm going to click create done. Now for the second one also that I have part of my certificate, I don't have to go to my third party or anything. I have it in Rafi to three. So it's telling me here, Hey, we can do this for you. Okay. So I'm just going to click that as well. Click on create. Okay. And then I'm going to click on continue. All right. So now it's pending. Give it a couple of minutes. Okay. Let's give it a couple of minutes and then it should, it should eventually work. Okay. Um, let me just click out and then click back, click out and click back into it. Pending validation. Oh, look at that. Very fast. This, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yes, exactly. I mean, yep, yep. All right, guys, look at that. We have a certificate issued for us for those domains that we know that we own. Okay. All right. What do we want to do now? Uh, what do we want to do now? Uh, load balancer. Now, what we want to do at this point, guys, is we want our load balancer instead of taking connection requests from HTTP only, we want it to forward HTTP requests to what? To what? Our load balancer, if someone is coming HTTP, forward it to what? There you go, HTTPS, okay? Again, your company has given you this task. Hey, no more HTTP, HTTPS from now on. Get it done for us, <laughs> okay? So by the end of today, you guys will be able to knock out that project, all right? Um, and these are very common things, guys. These are very common things that happens, you know, once you become a cloud architect, 
you know, maybe your company is helping other clients host their web applications in the cloud, right? So with all of this, you guys should become, you know, solid, right? And be confident in taking on those tasks. All right. Um, so let me go now to my uh, load balancer. Okay. I'm in my load balancer. Okay. Listeners. Click on listeners. Click on listeners. Okay. All right. So here's what we want to do. Let us go ahead and view and edit rules. Okay. View and edit rules. View and edit rules. Okay. Are you guys following? Let me go back again. Do you guys see what I just did? I clicked on load balancers. I clicked on load balancers and I clicked on the listeners tab. That's all I've done so far. Okay. I clicked on listeners tab. All right. Now, when we created this load balancer, you guys remember the listener we had only was HTTP. Okay. And that's going to, you know, direct to our what? To our uh, 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 instance that is in this target group. Okay. Load balancer is going to route the request to this target group and the target group has a server that's going to, you know, that has the, the website running and all that to present back to the user, to the end user. Okay. So what we want to do here is let's add a listener. Okay. Let's add a listener. Let's add a listener. What are we going to change this to guys? I'm waiting for you guys. There you go. There you go. Very good. Now let's add an action. Let's add an action. Forward to. The action is forward to. Okay. The action is forward to. That target group. Don't worry. I know some of you are thinking. But HTTP is writing the target group. And then we're going to change something in the HTTP once we're done with this. Okay. And that's going to be a quiz question for all of you. Now, just continue doing what I'm doing. Okay. So we have that. Um, okay. And then go ahead and select what? Your certificate that you just created. If it's been issued, you should see it auto populate here now. Okay. That's why we're able to configure HTTPS now. Because we have a certificate we can use to prove that HTTPS validity. All right. So go ahead and click on that. All right, guys. So um, that's pretty much all we need to do here. Go ahead and click on add listener. Done. Okay. So I'm going to go back. This is how I'm going to go back. Look at this arrow right here. This is how I'm going to go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. Now I have two. I want to edit this one to forward to this one. Okay this this because at the end of when people go to this we don't want them to be taken to our resource no we want it to to go we want that you know you know that traffic to be encrypted and all that um using https so if you do this you know i, I haven't tested before but this this probably means they're going to be routed directly to the resource okay just from looking at it but here this is not what we want we want if they do this let it what use https and 42 https and get that from what using this okay i know i'm explaining these things in very very simple terms um and that's the goal of my you know of my you know teachings you know to put it in a way that's just easier for you guys to understand okay i don't want to use a lot of you know jag jargons that you know get things confusing for you all right again when people are coming to our website in http we want it to redirect to https and get you know to our server using https so this now we're going to change and remove this all right, so let's go ahead and click on view and edit. Okay, view and edit. Now, guys, click on the uh, 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 pencil icon here. Click on the pencil icon here. And then click on here. I believe this is, yep. Are you guys following so far? Did, you, did any of you get lost in how I got here so far? Anybody? I, I can do it again. No. Very good. Let me click on this button. Um, is this what I was looking for? 
test dg no this is not it let me go ahead and cancel let me go ahead and cancel let me go back let me go back here click on this there are two places and i always get that confusing sometimes let me see edit give me one second still the same thing uh yes leave i think i have to delete it first i have to delete that uh so do this with me guys i think i got it do this with me guys go ahead and click on http again click on http okay click on edit all right click on edit i think once you put it to forward tool you can change it again to redirect which is what we're trying to do all right so go ahead and click on edit again for http only click on edit okay delete this delete this forwarding to test target group as you can see even if i try to edit it's not letting me change this forward to which is what i want okay i'm gonna just delete this all right delete that okay so there's no default action for now all right we're gonna add an, a new action okay we're gonna add a new action type the number five if you're with me so far type the number five let me make sure that you guys are still very good very good all right now click on add action what should you choose here guys what should we choose here? Are you are you guys seeing my screen? Look at the options I have. Look at the options. Very good. Redirect to. Redirect to what? Already chosen. HTTPS. Okay. And just leave everything like that. Um, and then what else here? Don't forget your port number. Okay. Don't forget your port number. What's the port number, guys? Very good. 443. Now let's click on update. Okay, modified. Very good. Now we're redirecting HTTP to HTTPS. Okay, so it, it don't worry about you don't don't try to understand this, guys. Okay, if you do, great. All right, just um, know that it will forward uh, redirect HTTP request uh, uh, to HTTPS. Okay, and then it will get your uh, uh, server running your website from there. Okay, it will get your website from from that server. All right. Um, what else now, guys? Uh, I can close or I can just use it to get to my. Uh, I'm gonna go down to where? Where do I need to go now, guys? To make an. I think it. Let's say this is the final change we need to make. Faisal, very good. Amani, very good. Adekunle, <laughs> very good. All right. Certificate manager. Excuse me. Certificate manager. As two, are you following? Please say yes. Oh no, you got lost somewhere. Okay, pending certificate. Okay. Um, did you have yours with Route 53? Did you have your certificate with Route 53? Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking too long for you. Um, but let's just wait and see. Um, also, if it doesn't finish by at the end of this video, um, you can watch the recording later on. Uh, but sorry about that. All right, guys. Um, certificate is issued. I was trying to go to Route 53. I put certificate. All right, Route 53, guys. Let's go to Route 53. Okay, hosted zones. Hosted zones. Hosted zones. Okay, yes, certified aws.com. Okay, records. As you can see, it's showing me that, you know, this with this was, I remember I didn't do this. If you had your domain with GoDaddy or anything, you would have put this in here so that AWS Certificate Manager would know that you own that domain. But look, it did it for me. It entered this for me. I never entered this here. I never created a record and put these values in here. Hope you guys get the gist, right? This is how it validated it for me, right? It put it in here for me because I'm using RAW53 by just clicking that button. All right, guys. And don't worry again, my NS records will change after this session. I trust you guys for now though. All right, Um, what else, what else? Let's create a record, right? Let's create a record. So let me go ahead now and create a record. So that record will point to our what? That record will point to our what? Quiz question, guys. If we create a record now to take requests from, you know, if any, someone types in yescertifiedaws.com or your own domain, very good, I mean, to val the that value will be what? To our load balancer, very good. So let's go ahead and create a record now, okay? 
again, some of you might not see this interface. Okay, you might be seeing this uh, a quick create page. You might you might see this page. So make sure you switch. Look for this switch to wizard icon uh, uh, button, right? Look for switch to wizard. Make sure you're in this, you know, uh, easy to use uh, 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 interface. So we're gonna choose simple. We're gonna choose simple. Go ahead and click on next. Okay, let's define a simple record. Okay, it's gonna be yes, yes certified.com. What's the endpoint, guys? Well, I mean, you already said it. Let's just look for it. Application. Remember, you created an application load balancer. You didn't create a network load balancer or a, uh, yeah. So you created an app. So it says alias to application and classic load balancer. So this is the one you want to choose, guys. This is the one you want to choose. Okay, alias to application and classic load balancer. I'm going to click on that now. Okay, choose region. Uh, of course, Northern Virginia. Let me search for Northern Virginia. Okay, it's where my uh, server resides. Uh, load balancer. Load balancer. We only have one. So you guys should see that one populate in there automatically if you click the box. So I'm going to choose that. Okay. Uh, all right. Yep. Brought IPv4. Okay. And some AWS resources. In this case, the AWS resource is an, it's a load balancer. So just leave this as this one. All right. Uh, evaluate target health. We don't need this. Um, okay. Select it if you want Rafi3 to use this record to respond to. Um, so in this case, guys, um, we don't actually we don't have multiple resources. Okay, that maybe it will fail over to another one, or so we can leave this unchecked. But I don't. I believe it also doesn't hurt to leave it checked as yes as well. Okay, so uh, select it if you want Rafi to use this record to respond to DNS queries if the specified resource is healthy. So if it's healthy, it it will respond using this load balancer, whatever's behind this load balancer. Okay, um, so go ahead and click on define simple record. All right, go ahead and click on define simple record. Create records. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And that's it. All right. Fingers crossed, guys. I believe we're done. I believe we're done. If we go to this website now, it should automatically switch to HTTPS. HTTPS. Are you guys ready? Who's ready in the chat? Are you ready? Is it going to work or not? Again, if it doesn't work, don't worry. That's part of everyday life as a, as a cloud architect or a cloud engineer. You're going to have to troubleshoot and find out what's going on, right? Are you guys saw how we had to troubleshoot last time, right? My VPN. We found out my VPN was the issue. So today, let's see. I'm going to open uh, an incognito window. Ah, someone said it worked for them. Awesome, awesome. So I'm pasting mine. Please give me a padlock. Oh, I, I should have made that a, 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 a quiz question. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to do, I'm going to check. Oh, <laughs> works for Aminu <laughs> with a padlock. Exactly. I was going to ask you guys, right? How would you know if this is secure? And you guys will notice if it's secure, you guys would, you guys must have seen this before, right? Using Chrome or using, I believe Mozilla also uses a padlock. I'm not sure. Or a key, something like that. So you should see a padlock here. So look, guys, fingers crossed. Let me click enter. Mine didn't work. Mine did not work. Let me turn off my VPN again. Turn off. I don't know why it is the VPN, but let's see if it's the VPN. It's possible that it's not the VPN. Okay, I'm just gonna close that again, right? And, and just do it again. Come on now, come on now. Yes. All right, congratulations, guys. Congratulations, guys. You have done an amazing job today. You guys can become free, for real, for real. Like, you can become freelancers, right? Um, help people host their websites, okay? I know I said I'm still going to try to cover, you know, how to host a Node.js application. But for HTTP, for HTML and PHP applications, you know, this, all of this should work. 
okay which are some of the most popular uh, ways people you know write their applications you know a lot of people still do php but you know more frequently we're getting more of you know um node.js uh react you know but we'll, we'll touch on those okay as the weeks uh, uh, as we move along okay so it could be that your developers wrote an application in node.js of course this configuration and all that we we'll need to make some changes okay but don't worry in the coming weeks would we'll learn how to host a Node.js app. You know, what other, what other one? Uh, Java, right? Maybe, you know, get a Tomcat server and let's say your developers can only write in Java, right? So you, they, they need you to host a Java application. We're gonna, you know, try to see how to do that as well. But again, guys, now, um, this is one of the most popular, you know, people write mostly, you know, in, you know, using HTML, PHP, um, and you guys know how to host that now, right? So. Um, a great job. Now you guys can see your boss will be happy. The website is secure. Everyone's happy. HTTPS, right? That's another, if, you, if, you, if you're into the cybersecurity field, that's another control you can check off, right? Website is using HTTPS. Control checked, right? <laughs> what is the term we can use in resume regards to certificate? Uh, EC2 certificate manager, I'm um, sorry. Uh, Amazon, using Amazon certificate manager to secure a website, right? Uh, to redirect requests from HTTP to HTTPS to make sure our website is secure or, or to using AWS certificate, to, slow down, slow down. Using AWS uh, certificate manager to make sure that the website is secure using HTTPS. Okay. Um, so again, like I said, guys, like, and um, I'm, I'm really happy I'm getting some great news from, from, from some of you, right? So one person who's always part of this session just got a job offer from KPMG. That's one of the big four companies, right? And I, I looked at his resume and he listed <laughs> he listed everything we've been doing every week on his resume as projects he, he did, which is good. There's no lie about that. You know, again, you guys remember one thing I'm always big on is whatever you put on your resume, make sure you put the right thing, right? Don't lie on your resume. Don't lie in interviews. If you don't know something in an interview, say you don't know, okay? But this works, guys, right? If employers can see, you, you can use my titles for this. If you look at my YouTube videos, for the projects you, you want to put on your resume, put a section, call it projects, say projects, and then use the title of my videos, right? You know, I did this, I did this, I did this. And you're like, wow, you did all this. You know about RDS, you know about EC2, you know about S3. You can host a static website in S3. You can, you know, host a dynamic application. So he listed all that in his resume, right? And um, he, he, he's getting a job. He's going to be starting soon. So um, the floor is open. We have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. Let, if you guys have any career Q&A uh, questions, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, now we're in the career Q&A session, okay? Or if you have any questions about what we did today, go ahead. Floor is open. Two people only, guys. All right, go ahead. Who is this? Ronnie. I can tell from the voice. Is this Ronnie? Yeah. Okay, Ronnie. Hey. Um, Directly with uh, the certificate manager, do you have those steps? Um, so for that, you would need a you need to get a third party. Uh, um, you need to get a, a third party. Um, what do you call it? Certificate. Okay, you cannot again. And and I've worked in AWS uh, uh, support before before I became a solutions architect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just to make sure, guys, everything I teach you guys in this session it has nothing to do with, you know, AWS. Okay, this is just me, you know, taking my time to teach this to you guys. All right. So I, nothing, don't affiliate whatever I'm teaching you guys or anything to AWS, you know, as a company itself. Okay. And I put that in my uh, what do you call, in the description in the flyer for this sessions. Okay, just putting that out there. Okay, uh, Ronnie, to answer your question, um, again, uh, from my experience that will not work they have they even have it in the documentation okay if you're going to use certificate manager it has to work it, it, you have to use it with five supported services okay i cannot list all the five but i I'll, i can find the link later on uh, api gateway load balancer cloud front uh elastic beanstalk uh, and there's one more i cannot remember so you can use other, uh, so those are the services you can use with a certificate manager, okay? 
I can't I can't remember the last one. But if you're gonna use it directly with your EC2, with your EC2, you have to use a third party, right? And, and install the certificate on that server. Okay, as you can see in our case, we didn't have to go to the EC2 and install the certificate. Where did we where did we attach the certificate? On the load balancer, right? Because ACM supports you using it via the load balancer. Okay. Ronnie, does that make sense? You can uh, you can now use ACM. Yes, but that, that means the EC2, which is defined in our target groups, right? Mm -hmm. Those do access through the HTTP, meaning that load balancer uh terminated the TLS. Right from load balancer to the EC2 actually mm. is through the HTTP. I believe so. I believe so. If I understand your question correctly, from the load balancer to the EC2, EC2. because it's within the AWS network, or yeah. also if you're using from CloudFront, you know, to your origin, which is an EC2, you don't have to use HTTPS. But some people are, you know, they want to use HTTPS. You can still do that. But yes, it, it will terminate and just use HTTP. Okay, because okay. At, at that point, it doesn't matter. Right, you already got the connection from HTTP from the client. Thank you. HTTPS, sorry, from the client. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I know Ronnie asked some, uh, Ronnie is again, as for some of the new Ronnie is an advanced user, so some of the questions Ronnie throws at us can be very technical. It's okay, we're all learning. Uh, you guys can also learn from that. Um, but great question, Ronnie, thank you. I always value your, you know, your questions, your input and all that, uh, appreciate it. Uh, any other question? Go ahead and unmute. I think I can take two more. We still have like eight minutes, guys. Come on, you have to have questions about you know job or what we did today or some. Don't worry, guys. You can ask me troubleshooting question as well. That's fine. If I can answer it, I'll answer it. Anybody else? Rehab, you gotta unmute and and ask a question. This is a this is unmuting time. Okay. Maybe you might be on mute, Rehab. That way you can frame your question well and I can um, better understand it. Oh, it's not working. Oh, sorry. Let me see if I can. How can we get benefits from this hands-on project too? Oh, I mentioned that. I don't know if you... I mentioned that. I said, you know, have a... Uh, I might actually update my sample resume that I have and just stop put it, loading this week weeks in there, right? In your sample resume, you know, like I said, somebody has actually done that. All of this week by week, he took them and he listed it on his resume as, uh, he actually put my name on the resume, right? I don't know if he's on it. I don't want to mention his name. You know, I keep it anonymous, right? You know, that he followed my sessions on, um, on, on, on YouTube and then he listed the projects, right, that he followed me doing. And that's what he did, guys. And he's interviewing now. He, he's, he got an offer, right? He got an offer, right? Let's just say that. So it's not a very long resume. It didn't put all. He put like the most important was like the one we did about RDS, uh, EC2, S3. I believe he put the S3 one as well. Uh, but I'll put this one today, guys. I will put this one today. So if you put in it, the, put the project we did for RDS, put the one we did for dynamic website, put the one we did for static website. Now put this one. Very important. This one we do, we just did with HTTPS, put it as well, right? Project that you did, you know, uh, just put in one line. Don't don't write a, a long statement, right? Just put uh, created a website where I, you know, was able to uh, redirect HTTP traffic, you know, uh, to a more secure HTTPS uh, uh, using using HTTPS. Okay, just see how you'd be able to word that. Uh, make a website more secure using HTTPS, right? By leveraging AWS Certificate Manager. How about that? Uh, Hello. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I uh, yeah. of the job asked for at least four to five years experience. And as mm -hmm. you know, for me, like, um, just entry level. Mm -hmm. How can, yeah, how can I fix this problem? How, what, 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 what I should add to my resume to be recognized? What should you add to your resume is, um, for example, what I just mentioned, this project, Okay, this uh, uh, labs, as you may as well call it, that we've been doing every week, do them and list them on your resume. Okay, list them on your resume. Uh, at this point, if you have up to week 12 listed on your resume, I don't think it's, it's you don't have to put it in, in, in multiple lines. You can just put comma. You know, you could put a comma and put, you know, the title of the project, which is, we could be, we could be the title for this week's that we've been, you know, the title that I put in my YouTube you know, you can use those titles and just comma, 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 so everything looks like it's in one paragraph, okay? Um, 
uh, look at my resume. Okay, look at my resume. That resume was built for someone who doesn't have much experience. Okay, so you don't have to put any experience in there for now. But like I always say to those who don't have experience, what you can use to make yourself stand out is to actually become certified. Okay, is to actually become certified. Because that 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 should that will that will help you with that additional advantage. Right? Um, okay, you don't have an experience, but you're someone who's self-taught, you know, you're determined, you know, and I I strongly I'm seeing that companies who, who you know uh, do that, you know, they progress a lot. Right? And companies are doing that. When they see your willingness to learn, like what you've been doing, you know, to 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 learn the project and things like that, they will bring you in, right? That you're someone who we can teach and train, and you know, um, uh, and uh, and you'll be able to do well on the job. So if you don't have an experience, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, do whatever type of job you can do now, at least so that you have some type of income. But as you're doing that, you're studying, you're pushing yourself towards that goal of at least becoming AWS Solutions Architect Associate Certified, okay? Everything you need to do to, to get to, to get certified, I put in my AWS article. If you look on my Telegram channel, which I say, everyone, please join that Telegram channel, okay? Be part of that Telegram channel. That's how you're going to know if this Zoom link changes, you know, daily AWS quizzes, any updates about these sessions, okay? Go and look at the pinned post at the top of the page. There's a lot of information there about the AWS article, and all that stuff okay so the lady who asked the question i hope that makes sense um again whatever experience you have don't put too much experience you know maybe at least one or two okay it doesn't matter if it's not technical all right i've mentored people who didn't have technical experience on their resume but they got certified and they, they have jobs at you know big companies now okay you know salesforce one is working at salesforce and you know working so again not all employ as just keep applying every day right make your resume look like my sample resume but please make sure you've gone through all of the resources before you put them on your resume okay um like, like i always like to say again i know i put a python scripting udemy course in the aws article you don't have to put that on your resume okay if you go through the um SQL, the four hour SQL video, the seven hour Linux video, and the four hour uh, uh, Python video, those should be enough, right, to put on your resume as well as, you know, part of the other, you know, technologies that you know, okay, or, or software or tools that you know, okay. But I, as I, you know, but if you look at my resume, just make sure, make sure, make sure at least you have those three on there. The SQL, don't worry, I've written it out. If you watch the video and you took notes, you know, you don't have, and again, guys, guys, please, before you go, you don't have to be an expert at them, okay? I'm not saying go and claim to be an SQL expert. No, you're familiar with it. You've played with it before, right? Just put it in your resume as I put it on my sample resume. So SQL, it's a four-hour YouTube video. If you guys have gone through it, you know what I'm talking about. Linux, please know Linux, right? There's a seven-hour Linux video that I put in there, right? Watch that. And list it on, on on your resume as I put it on mine. Um, what else, guys? What's the last one? Uh, 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 um, SQL, Linux, Python. There's a Python four-hour video. Okay, just have basic familiarity with programming. All right. I know some of us hate coding and things like that. I'm not a developer myself. Okay, but at least watch that four-hour video. Practice those tiny tiny projects he's doing with Python, like creating a math. Uh, Matlib game, something like that, right? Put those on your resume as well, okay? This this is all showing that you're someone who can learn, right? Someone who's willing to learn, okay? And and when employers see that about you, you know, sooner or later you find someone bring you in and give you that opportunity, you know, to start as a junior cloud engineer role, apprenticeship, or you know, something like that. So I know that's a lot, but I hope you know you, you guys. Uh, 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 get a lot of benefit from that. Um, that's how we, I want you to, you know, go about all of this. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's not technical experience. Just put one or two experiences in there. But look at my template resume and make that your goal. Okay, make that your goal. Again, if you're wondering the SQL, the SQL, the Linux, and the database, where are they? They are in the article. 
again you can skip the python script in udemy course if you look at the article you know what i'm talking about okay but make sure you remove it from the resume does this make sense guys please type the n number nine if all of this makes sense I, and i'm hoping everyone here all 26 people will type the number nine nine i'm expecting all 26 people on this call type number nine if that all makes sense if it doesn't you can unmute and ask a question <laughs> okay very good very good all right okay all right i think it's 12 o'clock guys i mean this is like the first time ever we finished on time <laughs> right so thank you guys uh for joining this session i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys benefited a lot uh try to look at some freelance websites right google aws freelance jobs okay um see if you can you know message some freelancers and ask if you can shadow them on some of their projects you know, these are some of the ways you can just navigate and you know try to get some you know uh, or you try to take on some freelance jobs right look at what the project is saying if it's in if it's if it involves anything we've done so far i think you can you can handle it right you can try to you know or find someone to pair with and you know uh, uh 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 and just work on this project together i know many of you don't know each other and you cannot get to know each other because the telegram channel is not you know you can't see each other or anything like that um maybe at some point in the future we'll have another channel whereby you guys can start to form groups right and work with each other and you know uh, study with each other and things like that otherwise maybe let's not go that far you know find people in your in in, in your circle you know at, uh, your job you know you guys can maybe take on a challenge and say we're gonna study and get the solutions architect associate or we're gonna uh, and also the devops engineer professional okay let's study together sometimes when you have study buddies it makes things you know more fun and and you guys say every weekend you come together and discuss a topic or two that you learned from a video that you watched okay so that's just an idea i'm throwing out there for me um uh, i'm usually i'm okay with studying alone right i i can do it but some people they it, they just work better in when they're with a couple of other people and then they share which is good i i, I love you know doing things you know in a group it's just it's better when you do that um so um that's also not an idea uh that's an, an option find people or study group together you know and study together and all that all right enough guys enough let me stop talking <laughs> let me stop talking all right um if there are no other questions thank you guys um i should be uploading the video sometime later today um thank you thank you thank you i mean this is a milestone guys this what we did today milestone https and you're able to get that done milestone guys uh so go ahead and you know keep exploring next week um i'll think about what we're going to do next week okay i, I can't i don't want to say anything now but i'll think about what, what, what we're going to do next week okay now uh, you guys will see when i post the flyer about next week's session all right have a great rest of your week guys thank you take care and uh bye i'll see you guys uh next weekend from 11 a.m to 12 p.m u.s eastern time on sunday sundays okay take care bye